Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rick with the Digital Divide. Now, recently I found out that Gateway started making computers again. I really loved their computers back in the 90s. When you buy a bargain basement PC, what you're really buying is a mystery box. Will there be a monitor? Probably not. Lots of software? Ha! A free year on the internet? 24-7 tech support? Dream on. With a Gateway Essential PC, you know exactly what you're getting. Monitor great software, award-winning tech support, and free internet access, all for $28 a month. So after a little bit of research, I ended up picking this up. It is a really, really affordable gateway computer with some pretty decent specs for the price. You can see they're going with the cow branding that they were known for back in the 90s. We're gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy open. So right at the top here, we have what I assume is gonna be the power brick. Uh, this should be like a little 65 watt uh, charger. Shouldn't take up too much real estate at all, but we'll go ahead and Toss that aside for now and get to the star of the show. Looks like there's some instructions here and some stickers. Tuned by THX. So I'm expecting these speakers to sound pretty good. This is the laptop. I really like the subtlety of the logo on the top there. The, the top here is made out of some, it feels like aluminum. The bottom though is definitely plastic uh, and it looks like it's got an expansion base so that you can add another SSD, which is really, really cool. You don't see that very often these days. Now it's got a glossy screen and a chiclet style keyboard similar to what you'd see on like a, a MacBook Air. It does have a fingerprint scanner on the touchpad, which is awesome. The touchpad itself is nice. It's huge. It feels great. And just as an example, this is this is what it looks like when you unlock it with your finger. I'm at the lock screen now. I'm going to put my finger down. And here we go. Okay, that took all of half a second to get me into Windows, which is really nice. So back to the laptop. On one side here, we've got a couple of ports. We've got a your microphone, your micro SD slot, a full-size headphone jack, and a USB 3.0 port. And then on the underside, again, we have an expansion uh, bay so that you can add another SSD. On the other side here, we've got a, a USB Type-C port, a full-sized HDMI port, another USB 3.0 port, power and then you've got a Kensington lock as well. As for the HDMI C port, I wanted to test it to see if it was a full service port. And when I say full service, I mean, I, I wanted it to know if it will do data, power, video, all of it, or if it just did one or the other. So I have an external monitor here that I'm gonna test that, that uh, connects through USB-C. So we're gonna plug that in. We're definitely getting power, so that's good. Uh, let's see if we get video. Okay, so it looks like we are getting videos. So this is a full service USB Type-C port. And this is what the power brick looks like in case you are wondering. Let's talk a little bit about the system specs. This features an 11th generation Intel i5 processor. It's got four cores, eight threads, and it will boost up to 4.2 gigahertz. It's got Intel Iris XE graphics. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it's got a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD card built in. It's also very light and very portable, weighing in at only four pounds, uh, and it does have a 14.1 inch display. So the screen is a 1080p IPS panel. It has really good color reproduction, really good viewing angles, a brightness of 300 nits, and because it's only a 14.1 inch screen, it has really good pixel density as well. So I mentioned before that this has an expansion bay at the bottom that will allow you to add another SSD. Uh, it does, but although it is an M.2, it's not an MVME. So this will accept M.2 2280 specifically. So the 2280 model of M.2 SATA SSD is what this will support, uh, which is great to just because it already has 512 gigs internally on the MVME. And this just allows you to add a lot of additional storage if you want to. Now, I happen to have one of these drives laying around. This used to be the old boot disk for my main gaming PC until I upgraded to something bigger. It's only 128 gigs, but it's collecting dust in a closet. So why not plug it in and get the extra space? Uh, now, before I go any further, I want to say that 
While I was researching whether or not I wanted to buy this video, I came across a video by a really great YouTuber by the name of ETA Prime, and, and he, he kind of highlighted how with this specific model of laptop, right out of the box, it's, it's only set with a TDP of 15 watts. But what you can do is go into the BIOS and you can adjust that manually up to 30 watts and you can get significantly better performance if you do that. Check this video out. And with a few quick setting changes, you can actually double the performance of this thing. So while it's booting up, press delete, it's going to bring you into the BIOS. We're going to head over to advanced and as you can see, there are a ton of settings to mess around with. But the only thing that I changed was inside of power and performance, GT, which is going to be our GPU. And from here, I want to make sure that this is at its max frequency and we want to enable turbo. And by setting this to disabled, it will enable the GPU to turbo up to 1300 megahertz. Now we're going to go to the CPU performance section and find TDP. And from here, I just went through and turned this up from 15 to 30 watts. And that's all I changed inside of the BIOS. And I was able to almost double the performance of this laptop. And just to give you an idea, Here's a benchmark I ran, 3 d Mark Night Raid, on the stock TDP, which was just right out of the box at 15 watts. Total score here, 6,566. After changing the GPU turbo settings and the TDP in the BIOS, I ran the benchmark again, and we got a 12,047. This is a huge performance jump. All right, so jumping onto the laptop itself, I'm gonna hop over to YouTube, and although this is only a 1080p screen, I'm gonna run a 4K HDR test using the LG demo video that they have, and this is one of the most demanding videos that you can run. So I'm gonna run this at 4K, 60 frames a second, and then it's gonna downsample it back to 1080p. And I'm gonna turn on stats for nerds, so you can see the real-time metrics and color reproduction up on the top left. It uh, looks like we, we're, we've we currently rendered a thousand frames or so when we've only dropped two of them, which is really, really good. Uh, so I'm gonna fast forward some of this just for the sake of time here. Okay, so that you, you can see, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop here. I think we have a big enough sample. We rendered 3,855 frames and of those we only dropped 11. And guys, the only reason we lost any frames uh, during that render was because I had this new uh, screen recording software that I'm using that was running in the background and it was it, it caused those frame drops. I'm going to move on to testing some video games now, but in order to make sure that I don't affect performance at all, I'm going to record all of this footage off screen with my cell phone. Uh, so I apologize in advance if the quality of the video sucks, but here we go. All right, so the first game we're going to take a look at is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I'm playing this on uh, the PC version of Xbox Game Pass. I'll show you the settings real quickly. I'm running this at 1080p. I am using a little bit of resolution scaling, and mostly it's it's everything's on medium or high, with the exception of anti-aliasing, which I, I have on um, on low, just because I don't I don't like it being too smoothed over. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pick our characters. I'm going to go with Ryu and my man Ghost Rider over here. And we're going to jump into a game. Uh, let's go with the Power Stone. So this is one of my favorite Capcom fighting games uh, ever. Uh, this is the last entry in this specific series. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how it runs. Alright, so right off the bat, this is running really well. It... Let's see what it looks like when it gets into actual gameplay, though. Oh, awesome. Okay, so this is great. Th this is running at full speed. The reason I wanted to test this game out in particular is because games like this, um, they don't skip frames. So if your frame rate drops below the intended frame rate target, which in this case is 60 frames per second, the entire game will slow down to a crawl. So we know it's running at full speed. Again, it's mostly medium settings uh, with some things on high, uh, and it's running at 1080p with uh, resolution scaling set to about 80%. Next game I want to take a look at is Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. This game just came to Game Pass not too long ago. And uh, so I'm running this at a native 1080p, no resolution scaling, everything's on the highest uh, settings here. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. Now, if you're not familiar with this game, it is a brand new game, but it's made to look 
in the style of an old game like Quake, for example, like Quake One or Quake Two, um, or that that style of game. Um, and it's but it but it uses a lot of modern lighting techniques and bloom and shadowing and, and that sort of thing. Now I just started playing this game yesterday, so I actually don't even have any guns yet. I'm using my my uh, chainsaw sword, and the game is running beautifully. Like, again, everything is on the highest settings, 1080p, and it, it feels like I'm getting a rock-solid 60 frames per second, although I don't have fraps running because, again, I, I didn't want anything to affect the performance, so I'm, that's why I'm recording this footage off-screen. And it is running exceptionally well. This is a really great experience. Uh, by the way, I love this game. It's so much fun. If you have Game Pass, you should get this game. It's, it's really, really fun. So far, I mean, I'm, I'm early on into it, but I love the visual design. All right, next game I want to talk about is Hot Wheels Unleashed. This is a really great racing game. Uh, also available on Game Pass, on Steam, on, on whatever store you, you like on PC. It's probably there. I'm running this one at 900p. Everything is mostly on medium settings. So we're going to go ahead and get this started and see how she runs. Uh, you just have to figure out which car I want to go with. This twin mill is like, the specs on this thing are incredible. So yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with that. This one looks cool, but the speed sucks. All right, I'm just going to use my top dog car. All right, so there's a little stuttering when it's loading right at the beginning. But after that, it really smooths out. So we're about to get into it so you can see the performance here. Again, we're running at uh, 900p, so just under 1080 uh, with everything set to medium. And as you can see, I, I'm getting a rock solid, very stable, silky smooth frame rate. Uh, by the way, this game's really, really fun. You should check it out if you are into racing games or if you grew up playing with Hot Wheel toys. But yeah, th this is running beautifully. This is an, a really great experience. All right, next game we're going to take a look at is Hi Fi Rush. Uh, this was kind of a sneak attack game that released, I believe, late last year uh, on Xbox and for PC as well. Uh, so I'm running this one. Well, we'll jump into settings in a minute. Let me get to some the actual gameplay area first. Okay, so this is... I forgot. I haven't played this game in a while. This is like a little overworld. You got to jump on your couch to get to the actual level stage that you want to play. All right, so this is where I left off. Again, I haven't played this in a while, so I don't remember anything about this game. I need to... Uh, I'll quickly jump over to the settings and show you that I'm playing it. 1080p, um, I do have everything set pretty much to medium settings. Uh, I am using uh, Temporal uh, TSR, and it's set to balanced. And as you can see, the game is running beautifully. Uh, it looks great. This is just overall a really great experience. And guys, I haven't gotten into what this laptop cost yet, but I think you're going to be very surprised at how much you're getting for how little you're paying. Okay, it looks like this is some kind of boss fight, or at the very least, a new bad guy I haven't seen yet. If you're not familiar with this game, it is like rhythm-based, so you have to time all of your attacks based on the rhythm of the music and the little cat head next to me um, flashes when I'm supposed to hit. Uh, and that, that helps you out quite a bit. But I am not very good at this game, which is why I have not played it in a while. Uh, but I thought it was a good one to test out because it's relatively recent. It's less than a year old. Um, and I think this just came out for PlayStation 5 as well. Just got a port for it.
Okay, guys, I also uh, played Doom Eternal, but unfortunately I lost that footage and I just did not have the time to go back and re-record it, but it, it ran excellent. So I think this laptop is great for gaming if you plan on gaming between 900p to, to 1080p and on medium settings. I think you're going to have a good time. So what about the camera? Is that any good? Well, they had to cut corners somewhere, and this is where they cut corners with the camera. It's only 720p. It looks pretty bad. This is a sample. Um, you know, it's passable. If, if you need to use it for a Zoom meeting or something, it's there and it works. It's just not going to be the best video or audio quality. So what about the speakers? They're tuned by THX, so you would expect them to sound great. Well, I thought they sounded okay. What about battery life? Well, they are advertising this to, to last up to 10 hours. In, in my testing, if you're, if you're just uh, surfing the web or, or writing up a Word document or doing some light video editing, you'll probably get around between six and eight hours. Um, if you're using it exclusively for games, that's gonna be more like four or five hours. So that mostly wraps up my thoughts on this thing. I, I think it's an incredible laptop, especially for the price, which by the way, is only $369. You get, you get all of that laptop for such a tiny little price. I can't recommend it enough at that price point. I bought this to review, but I'm definitely keeping it to use as a daily driver. As always, thank you for watching.